Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So first off, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my Patreon supporters, Al Heyman. Thanks for your support. Now in today's video, we're going to go over Xion as a 5 star, and we're going to do a little bit of gameplay and let you know what I think about her. But the most important question of all is, is she hot or not? Oh yeah, she's hot. Look at that uh, bullet belt. She's using it as a garter. Anyways, uh, Shion's VC is all right, I get type resist up 20% and status immunity for one time, certainly not as defensive as uh, 30 plus for shielding. Now just like her other compatriots, one over limit uh, Mystic Art at 25% or less HP, and at a certain AF combo she does have that Concerto Art which I will demonstrate in the AF. Note that she does have a counter, so if she gets hit by any physical attack, she hits an AoE uh, Thunder type attack. Um, and it actually applies a small type down, not sure if it's 3 or 5%, stackable up to 10 times. So keep that in mind that you can actually use that as a niche. Now in terms of her moveset, she does have a lot of um, support and healing. So heal all members for 30% regen L. Um, this one can apply physical and magic resistance down and inflict poison. Now keep in mind, magic resistance can double up with things like type resistance. And remember that between the two of them, you can only get 100% maximum. However, it is a new and different uh, debuff that we've seen in the game so far. She also does have a restore status. So for... Uh, Frontline unit that has some offensive capability, it's actually not bad for her to have any of those supportive moves. Now her Luke Celestra is the Mystic Arc move. This one is a Fire AoE times 3 XL, power and speed down 25% for 3 turns. I will say this is very lacking. Not only is it only 25% down, it is no int down as well. We see people with triple down in power and speed at least in the 30-35 mark and honestly at the 25 mark, you can get much better units, even some of the free units have 35 or better. So I will say that it's a little bit disappointing in that sense. And her wing clip, again, even though it is a fire type pierce AoE XL and increased damage when enemy is weak to fire and will inflict pain and stun, not bad, but the DPS really isn't anything to uh, consider compared to some of her compatriots and also to some of the newer units out there. Now that being said, here's her 5 star board. And of course, we are using MP Consumption Grasta, so you can see that reflected in her moves. And note that she does have the Gun and Glutton personality as well as Bow, so she can carry uh, Grasta for Alma if you have her, or likewise the other way around. And here's her normal Grasta moveset and her level 1 VC Grasta. So let's take her out for a spin. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So first of all, um, obviously against enemies weak to fire at the lower limits, she can easily clear them with any of her uh, DPS moves, either her one that applies uh, power and speed down or the other one that hits um, against weak point and it will do a little bit more damage which I'll actually uh, be able to demonstrate for you right here. So note that with uh, the two of them there, when you hit it, the one that's weak is approximately two and a half times more damage against the one that's neutral to her fire or her pierce move. And I will say that, unfortunately, I did put some people in the back to carry Grasifor. I actually was um, recording some other um, clips and unfortunately forgot to remove them. So I do apologize for that. It does skew the uh, values a little bit, so keep that in mind. Now, remember what I was saying about uh, countering with a thunder type uh, pierce attack that uh, causes, um, you know, the type resist down whatever small it is and stackable up to 10 times. Like I said, I'm not sure if it's 3 or 5%. However, the fact that you can stack multiple times can actually help out in extended uh, fights and um, it does last for 3 turns as well. Okay, and so you can actually do things like heal, heal the team. Remember that it can um, uh, apply regen. It's a small regen and again, she's not high in int and so her major moves are not going to heal a ton. Now when you're less than 25%, you can uh, do that Mystic Art, which actually can do a substantial amount of damage. It does multi-hit piercing attacks, and it also recovers her full HP, and actually applies power and speed down 50% for 3 turns. Okay, so in our next example, I just wanted to show you that uh, she can actually use the counter to clear some weaker mobs, especially at the higher levels. Now, if you're really early in the game, even the counter, any counter at all, can be useful because it's an AoE counter and it's free 
MP, zero MP cost. So it's not bad at all. But of course, um, when you counter, you don't gain AF bar. So keep that in mind. Now in our first example, I really want to show her um, use as a support because I think primarily she does fit into that role. She has a little bit of DPS capability, but honestly, it, she is outshone um, DPS wise by her other um, um, you know, tails of people. But that being said, I mean, the fact that she still got um, some um, debuffs, she can do the concerto arts, she can do some heal, she can do some status removal. I mean, it's hard to find a unit that can give all of those and you can customize it as you want. Not only that, but um, her move, uh, her DPS move can actually inflict stun and pain. The stun is not really as useful because obviously it won't hit any super bosses or stun them for the most part. But the pain can be very useful, especially if you're new to the game or relatively new to the game where certain moves either rely on pain for extra damage or you're in um, some areas where you have access to pain grasta, but you haven't really uh, have uh, further, haven't gotten further enough in the story to get the grasta or to benefit from that. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so this boss was obviously not really a boss of any sort. It's more of a horror. Uh, this was from actually the first night um, you know, side episode for those who have not completed it yet. I figure I'll show some different bosses or horrors that we haven't seen for a very long time. Certainly these are uh, older uh, fights and so certainly not that difficult. But let's be honest, when you're having access to a lot of these free units, they can be used in the end game. However, they may not be as powerful as some of the units out there, but they do have some uh, flexibility, some capabilities. And let's be honest, if your um, roster is um, you know, not complete, you do have access to a lot of different moves. All right, so the other horror or boss that is in the first night episode is here. This one is uh, vulnerable to fire and it actually can counter when you kind of build up the um, number of fire hits on it. If you use water, it kind of cools it down and can shut it down. So every time it gets hit by fire, it raises its own temperature, does more damage. Now note that because we did apply a power down, it does still mitigate some damage. Obviously, a lot of the damage is actually mitigated by Colette's Holy Judgment, which is her mystic art. And obviously that is covered in another video on her five star review. Okay, and all we are doing is just DPSing it all the way down here. So again, um, we're using obviously um, no zone here. We're just doing multi hits. Um, in these examples, like I said, Shion's really just there as a support. She can offer the heal or status clear or a modest power debuff as needed. Her other uh, units on her team are mainly the DPS. And so that will be the case for most of these examples. Now in our third example, I actually want to show you um, how she runs in a, you know, like a, a more powerful fire based team. You can still use the, um, you know, power debuff and speed debuff, especially against enemies a lot faster than you. Um, this artificial spirit the wind one tends to be quite fast compared to your team and you get outsped a lot where you can do things like stun kick back um, some uh, damaging uh, uh, you know beta decay which is 3006 damage uh, there's the re-establishing of wind zone and so on and so forth so if you can um, kind of keep it in bay by having it slower with her um, debuff then you can help control the game. Not just that, but a lot of times if you don't have any healer, she can still do some DPS and some healing, which is quite nice as well. All right. So in this example, what we really want to show here is that, remember, she has that unique debuff called Magic Resistance um, debuff, which we don't have in Global yet. I don't know if Japan has it, but certainly she uh, is a unique unit that has it right now. And you can say, oh, well, uh, Will, 30% down, not really that big a deal. It's true, it's not that big a deal, but if you notice some of the newer super bosses and stuff like that, they actually have a high type shield or magic resistance innate, either equipped by itself in case um, you know you try to dispel it, you cannot banish it or anything like that. In which case, you can apply more than the 100%. For example, say the enemy has a 50% type shield up or type resistance up. If you apply like multiple uh, resistance down and then you actually use that extra magic resistance down, you can start penetrating through its defenses, which is quite nice. Now, one thing I will say about this example is if you use her Mystic Art to apply 50% power and speed down, and then you spam her Luke, um, uh, you know, debuff move after her, the, the regular one, it will replace the debuff. Look closely. The debuff is now just 
small and small for power and speed. And so if you do use it as a primarily as a major debuff, do not use her debuff move again after that because it will replace the better one with the worst one. Remember that her Mystic Art does apply a 50-50. And actually, if the enemy is weak to her fire type attack or her pierce attack, it actually applies pain as well. So again, um, you can say it's not super awesome, but hey, still got some flexibility, still has some unique abilities. And I'll actually show you something that uh, I played around with as well. Okay, so here's the loadout. Obviously, Aisha is our uh, zone setter. Garyu True Manifest is our is our uh, beast when doing a ton of fire damage. Uh, Aldo is obviously um, you know still a 255 and doing tons of damage himself. In this case, obviously that magic resistance down. Even in wind zone, uh, we were able to do a lot of damage because don't forget when the enemy reapplied wind zone, uh, we do 50% less damage, but our magic resistance down helped Garyu do extra damage enough to punch right through. And like I said, um, I actually forgot to remove or adjust some Grasta here. So remember that Nagi being a glutton unit can carry glutton Grasta for Shion. I really have to remember to call her Shion instead of Shion because, you know, Shion's Shion. All right, so in our final example, we have something interesting here. Now, if you are patient enough to wear down your Shion to 25% um, or less HP outside a fight, you can start off with turn 1 50-50 dual debuff. Now, I understand that Kid can do 50-50 dual debuff as well. Um, other than, and then obviously you can have Orlea as well. However, remember, Kid does actually need stacks in order to do that. And so she does not need stacks. She can do it right off the bat, applying 50-50 both speed and power. So against fed enemies who are doing physical attacks, in combination with the powerful Holy Judgment uh, from Colette, I realize it's only a 50% chance of having that trigger. You are controlling the game. So even a true Manifest is at fight, um, we can mitigate a ton of that damage. And remember, just don't use that Luke Cel Celestra afterwards. Use her DPS Wing Clip move instead. Again, I realize her DPS is not that high. You can see most of the uh, damage is being done by um, obviously the other three units. And then you can just add your uh, Concerto outs to just uh, have some style points and so on and so forth. Um, you know. So I do like the fact that they design all four units to kind of uh, be complementary to each other. And remember that True Manifest of Suzette does counter at each HP stopper. And see, every time you get hit because it's an AoE by a physical attack, Shio now applies extra, uh, that little small um, type resist down, which let's be honest, it's not a lot, but extra few percentage might make the difference between winning and losing. Another counter. And again, that 50 power down with the type shield, 60% uh, from a Holy Judgment is really helping us win the fight. We can now heal. Like I said, she can heal. Or remember, you can put that dispel um, ability on her, and that, and then you can just kind of, you know, just let your other three units do the damage. So let me know in the comments below what you think of Shion. I know a lot of you uh, have said, "Will she kind of sucks? Uh, doesn't do a lot of anything." And I will argue that, yeah, she's not necessarily the most powerful, but given the fact that she's a free unit and she does have a lot of synergies with either her Tales of or uh, Fire type attack units. And let's be honest, a lot of free teams do focus on fire attacks. We have Garyu, we have Aisha, we have Gary, um, you know, we have Aldo, we have these new units, even some of the old uh, Tales of like Crest, they are fire based, uh, you know, Kid is fire based. You can do a lot with her if you need her abilities. And like I said, the fact that you can start off with a 50 50 right off the bat is quite unique as well. Um, a little bit cheesy, but let's be honest, it's kind of cool. And this time, Alma is carrying uh, for uh, Shion instead of Shion carrying for Alma, which will be the case for most of you in the future. So, in conclusion, hey, Shion's a pretty well designed unit. Obviously, not a top tier DPS unit, but she does have some versatility and her. Uh, design in terms of her move set and kit is pretty cool. Um, can't say I'll be using her a lot, but just the fact that you can experiment with her, um, find different ways to utilize her, who knows, we'll see her in some boss clears in the future, right? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.